This is a book I read two times this year. I want to present it to you and highlight few ideas. The name of the book is When the Earth Was Flat, All the Bits of Science We Got Wrong. The book was written by Graham Donald and published in 2017. Graham Donald is the author of a number of books about history, the meaning of words and popular misconceptions. When the Earth was flat, it's an interesting book showing how man has been always at the mercy of science. But since ancient times to modern days, science was many times far from the truth. When the Earth was flat is an entertaining and informative book about the colorful past of science. The author examines the shady history of science and the origins of some of the most extraordinary and astonishing scientific theories of the past. And with such a past, what would you make you think that the present is different? I will just show you some fragments from the book, encouraging you to read it, and afterwards, just think about the present days and imagine for a while how someone from the future could see the so-called scientific theories of present days. So this is a kind of controversial book. The first chapter is about phrenology. Phrenology was a theory developed by the German physician Franz Joseph Gall during the late 18th century, considering that an individual's character and mental faculties are correlated with the shape of his head. Many people, despite having previously lived perfectly normal lives, happen to possess heads similar to Gall's scientifically patterned, making them out as potential lunatics. A few unfortunate souls find themselves locked up as preventive measures. The public became seduced by Gall's theories. Companies incorporated phrenology in their personal selection. In the courts, many defendants were imprisoned through experts' witness rambling of professional phrenologists. Celebrities promoted a false theory, and in the United States, even Ralph Waldo Emerson and Thomas Edison have been among supporters of the ridiculous theory. Empiric instruments have been used to measure human heads and any bumps on the skull. And based on Gall's theory, many people unfair punished or eliminated from the society. In the When the Earth Was Flat, you can read also about a short history of tobacco believed in the past to cure a variety of health problems. And it was believed in this way until the mid-19th century. Hard as it may be to contemplate today, but from the early 16th century, tobacco was a miraculous health treatment until the mid-19th century when was proved contrary and scientific research began to reveal tobacco's poisonous qualities. In this book, you can read also some shocking details about the rise of eugenics as a science in the 19th century. Survival of the fittest, a phrase attributed to Darwin, was later used by tyrannical elements in justification of, among other oppressive policies, the new science of eugenics. Eugenics advocated controlled breeding in an attempt to increase the chances of desirable characteristics in offspring. The concept of a blonde-haired, blue-eyed super-race did not originate with the Führer. 
It derived the idea from studying the California Eugenics Program that kicked off in 1999. California was the first state to enshrine eugenics principally in its legislation and the California Eugenics Program allowed for the enforced isolation, sterilization of unfit individuals and marriage restriction laws. I let you read from page 57 to page 71 all the controversial details, well documented with many references of various publications and historical facts about the race of eugenics, how it was supported by political figures, financed by powerful organizations, and the culminant and tragical impact in the human society with the death of millions. There are so many interesting things debated in this book to make you think about us as humans and the history of science. I recommend you to read When the Earth Was Flat and think about all the bits of science we got wrong along the centuries. And during your reading, just keep in mind the words of the author. No matter how advanced today's medical and scientific thinking might be, who is to say that in 100 years time, a book similar to this one won't be ridiculing today's received wisdom.